Welcome everybody to another Voice of Nick show. We're doing more of the Post America audiobook here. Uh, <clears throat> we're currently on chapter 14, which is uh, the last chapter. So we're uh, near the beginning of the audio file. And we're probably maybe like 25% uh, through the what will be the length of the chapter itself because this file is going to get shorter as we cut stuff out. Here we go. How he slew in fight Penthesilea and Tithonus' son. How Aias laid low Glaucus, lord of spears. Then sang he how the child of Aeacus' son struck all he wrought in fight with Telephus and Aetian. How he slew giant Cenus. All the toil of war that through Achilles' wrath befell the Achaeans. How he dragged dead Hector round his own Troy's wall and how he slew in fight Penthesilea and Tithonus' son, how Aias laid low Glaucus, lord of spears. Then sang he how... And how he slew in fight Penthesilea and Tithonus' son, how Aias laid low Glaucus, lord of spears. Then sang he how the child of Aeacus' son struck down Eurypylus, and how the shafts of Philoctetes dealt to Paris death. Then the song named all heroes who passed into ambush in the Horse of Guile. <sighs> ...down Eurypylus, and how the shafts of Philoctetes dealt to Paris death. Then the song named all heroes who passed into ambush in the Horse of Guile, and hymned the fall of God-descended Priam's burg. The feast he sang last, and peace after war. Then many another, as they listed, sang. But when above those feasters midnight stars hung, ceased the Danaeans from the feast and wine, and turned to sleep's forgetfulness of care. For that with yesterday's war travail all were wearied, wherefore all were wearied, wherefore yesterday's war travail all were wearied, wherefore they who fain all night had reveled needs must cease, how wherefore they who fain all night had reveled needs must cease, how loath had reveled wearied, wherefore they who fain all night had reveled needs must cease, how loath had reveled, how loath soever, sleep, how loath soever, sleep. Wherefore they who fain all night had reveled, how loath soever, needs must cease. For they who fain all night had reveled, needs must cease. How loath soever, night had reveled, needs must cease. How loath soever, sleep drew them thence. All night had reveled, needs must cease. How loath soever sleep drew them then. In all night had reveled, needs must cease. How loath soever sleep drew them thence. Here, there, soft slumbered they. Here, there, soft slumbered they. Here, there, here, there, soft slumbered they. Here, there, soft slumbered they. Hmm. Maybe the first part of the first, second part of the second. Soever sleep drew them thence. Here, there, soft slumbered they. Here, there, soft slumbered they. Okay. 
slumbered they. But in his tent Menelaus lovingly with but but in his tent Menelaus lovingly with bright haired Helen spake, for on their eyes for on their eyes the Cyprian queen brooded above their soul. Hmm, is that really how I delivered that? Probably gonna re record this. But in his tent Menelaus lovingly with bright haired Helen spake. For on their eyes for on their eyes sleep had not the Cyprian queen for on their eyes bright haired Helen spake. For on their eyes sleep had haired Helen spake, for on their eyes sleep had not fallen yet. The Cyprian queen brooded above their souls. The Cyprian The Cyprian Sleep had not fallen yet. The Cyprian queen brooded above their souls, that olden love might be renewed, and heartache chased away. Uh, I think that works actually. Air, soft slumbered they. But in his tent Menelaus lovingly with bright-haired Helen spake, for on their eyes sleep had not fallen yet. The Cyprian queen brooded above their souls, that olden love might be renewed, and heartache chased away. Good. Uh, that is also a section break. And heartache chased away. Helen first break the silence. Okay. Now we go there. There. Helen, for not wroth with me, not of my will I. Heartache chased away. Helen, for. And heartache chased away. Helen first break the silence, and she said, O oh, Menelaus, be not wroth with me, not of my will I left thy roof thy. Did I re-record her lines, or is that... Thy wife answered her, Menelaus, why... No. They. In his tent, Men Helen first break the silence, and she said... Okay. Welcome, uh, Dragon King, to the show. We are editing our audiobook here. Yo, can't tell if my comments were going through. I love your podcast on Spotify. I've been listening to it all day. Cool, I'm glad you like it. Welcome in. Anybody who doesn't know what Dragon King is talking about, uh, one of my podcasts is uh, the Twitch Playbook, which is a free weekly podcast that I created to help you guys with your Twitch channels. Books and Games is a daily podcast where I uh, narrate the books that are in video games. Either one, uh, whichever one you like, I'm glad that you uh, enjoy it. <clears throat> and she said, Welcome in. Oh, Menelaus, be not wroth with me. Not of my will I left thy room. And she said, O oh, Menelaus, be not wroth with me. Not of my will I left thy roof. Th not of my Be not wroth with me. Not of my will I left thy roof, th thy bed. Alexander and this bed. But Alexander. Oh, I like this uh, uh, where Helen's like making excuses. Will I left thy roof, th thy bed. But Alexander and th thy bed. But Alexander and the sons of Troy came upon me and snatched away when thou wast far hence and snatched away when thou wast far hence oftentimes did I as oftentimes far hence and s Troy came upon me and snatched away when thou wast far hence oftentimes far hence oftentimes did I essay by the when thou wast far hence Oftentimes did I essay by the death noose to perish wretchedly, or by the bitter sword, but still they, they stayed mine hand, and still spake comfortable words, and still they, they stayed mine hand, and still spake comfortable words to salve my grief, and still spake comfortable words. I don't think all of these um, stutters are in the text, but I added it because that's, that's my interpretation of the character. or by the bitter sword, but still they, they stayed mine hand, and still spake comfortable words to salve my grief for thee and my sweet child. To salve my grief for thee and my sweet child, and my sweet child, 
for the uh, to sell words to sell words to sell sal uh, I think I might have to re-record this actually if we're gonna combine to salve it. my grief for thee comfortable words to salve my grief for thee and my sweet child that works for her sake and my sweet child for her sake for the sake of olden love and for thine own sake I beseech thee now forget thy stern displeasure against thy wife forget thine forget thy stern displeasure against thy wife forget thy stern displeasure against thy wife for her sake I beseech thee now forget thy stern displeasure I like our interpretation of her. For own sake, I beseech thee now, forget thy stern displeasure. Sake, I beseech thee now, forget thy stern displeasure against thy wife. Thy wife answered her. Good. I think this is the first appearance of Helen in the story, actually, which is in the final chapter. Dragon King saying, there are a lot of good tips. Oh, so you're talking about Twitch Playbook then. There are a lot of good tips and some things that I never really thought of before. So it helps out a lot. I'm glad to hear it. Glad you like the, uh, like the show. Just uh, um, the thing that I tell everybody, it's in the channel rules, but in case you didn't see it, uh, the thing that we don't do on here is we, we actually don't talk about... Uh, or like I don't give any further tips on here just to temper expectations because a lot of people who come in here from the Twitch playbook expect that I'm then gonna like answer their questions or whatever like uh, these are just like my streams where I make my streams they, they don't have anything to do with like me giving help or anything like that but I'm glad you enjoy the the show and welcome See in now. what's uh what are you up to at the moment you play video games or and for thine own sake I beseech thee now Forget thy stern displeasure against thy wife. Answered her Menelaus, wise of wit. Answered her Menelaus, wise of wit. That one's better. Wife. Answered her Menelaus, wise of wit. No more remember. No more remember past griefs. Seal them up. Yeah, that's good. I like that. Okay. Good. of wit no more remember past griefs seal them up it's like too bassy or something Menelaus, wise of wit no more remember past griefs seal them up hid in thine seal them up hid in thy griefs seal them up no more remember past griefs seal them up hid in thine heart let all be locked within the dark let all be locked within them up hid in thine heart let all be locked within the dim dark mansion of forgetfulness what profits it to call ill deeds to mind what profits it to call ill deeds to mind glad was she that <clears throat> i like our menelaus voice dark mansion of forgetfulness <clears throat> What profits it to call ill deeds to mind? Glad was she then. Fear flitted from her heart and came. Hmm. I think we just raised this separately. It's to mind. Glad was she then. Fear flitted from her heart and came sweet hope that her lord's wrath was dead. She cast her arms about him, and their eyes with tears. With remembrance of old spousal joy, brimming as they dead. She cast her arms about him. And their eyes with tears were brimming as they made sweet moan. And side by side, and as a vine and ivy, her arms about him, 
and their eyes with tears were brimming as they made sweet moan, and side by side laid them, and their hearts thrilled with remembrance of old spousal joy. Pretty graphic scene, actually. As they made sweet moan, and side by side laid them, and their hearts I'd laid them, and their hearts thrilled with re and side by side laid them, and their hearts thrilled with remembrance of old spousal joy. Thrilled with remembrance of old spousal joy, and as a vine and ivy and joy. And as a vine and ivy entwine their stems each around other, that no might of wind of it. Good. Raise that. Dragon King saying, "I just want to let you know how much I enjoy it. Appreciate it. And uh, yeah, it always it's it's very nice uh, of you to say that. It's it's very kind. I'm glad to hear you like it. But you like Fortnite, Pokemon Go, and Call of Duty Mobile. I've never played Call of Duty Mobile." Is it the same, is it like uh, based on one of the games in particular, or is it like based on Warzone? I don't know, if I was gonna guess, I would say it's like Modern Warfare era. And as a vine and ivy entwine their stems each around other, that no might of wind of it, that no might of wind avails to sever them. So clung these twain stems each around other, that no might of wind avails to sever them. So clung these twain, so clung these, so clung these twain, twined and might of wind avails to sever them. So clung these twain, to sever them. So clung these twain, twined in the passionate embrace of love. When came on these two sorrow draining sleep, when came on these two sorrow drowning sleep, even then above his. embrace of love. When came on these two sorrow drowning sleep, even then above his son's head rose a passionate embrace of love. When came on these two sorrow drowning sleep, even then above his son's head rose and stood God like Achilles mighty shade, in form as when he lived, the Trojans and stood God like Achilles mighty shade, in form as when he lived, the Trojans bane the joy of Greeks, and kissed his neck and flashing eyes lovingly, and kissed his neck and flashing eyes lovingly, Greeks, and kissed his neck and f the joy of Greeks, and kissed his neck and flashing eyes lovingly, and kissed his neck and flashing eyes lovingly, Greeks, and kissed his neck and flashing eyes lovingly, and spake comfortable words, and spake comfortable words. All hail, my son, all hail, my son. Vex not thine heart with grief. This is an interesting one because we already have a voice for Achilles when he's alive. And then I gave him like a more like wispy voice when he's a ghost. As lovingly. I had to come up with some kind of way to do that. Ashing eyes lovingly and spake comfortable words. All hail, my son. Oh, wait, that's the wrong timing. And spake comfortable words. All hail, my son. And spake comfortable words. All hail, my son. Vex not thy. Spake comfortable words. All hail, my son. Vex not thine heart with. Comfortable words. All hail, my son. Vex not thine heart with grief for thy dead sire. For with the blessed gods now I sit. For with the blessed gods now at the feast I sit. Refrain thy soul, thine heart with grief for thy dead sire. For with the blessed god. For thy dead sire. For with the blessed gods now at the feast I sit. Refrain thy soul from sorrow, and plant my strength within thy mind. Be foremost of the Argives ever, 
yield to none in valour, but in counsel bow before thine elders. But in counsel bow, be but in counsel bow before thine elders. But in counsel yield to none in valour, but in counsel bow before thine elders. So shall all acclaim thy courtesy. Honour princely men and wise, for the true man is still the. All acclaim thy courtesy. Honour prince. Shall all acclaim thy courtesy. Honour princely men and wise. Who shall all acclaim thy courtesy? Honour princely men and wise, for the true man is still the true man's friend, even as the vile man cleaveth to the knave. If good thy thought be, good shall be thy deeds. Man is still the true man's friend, even as the vile man cleaveth to the knave. If good thy thought be, good shall be thy deeds. If good thy good shall be thy deed, but no man if good thy thought be, good shall be thy deeds. It's like a nice little epilogue for Achilles, because he's the base. Achilles is the basis for the Iliad, the entirety of the Iliad, and then he dies off in the first third of this book. But this is a nice little moment for him to come back, and he just like gives Neoptolemus a bunch of advice, and then at the end he says like, and by the way, uh, slaughter a Trojan for me, and then and then he leaves, and they do. True man's friend, even as the vile man cleaveth to the knave. If good thy thought be, good shall be thy deeds. But no man shall attain to honour's height, but no man shall be, good shall be thy deeds. But no man shall attain to honour's height, except his heart be right within. Her, her stem is hard to climb, to honour's height, except his heart be right within. Her stem is hard to climb, and high in heaven spread her branches. Apparently somebody is doing a video game based on Achilles. I think it's like the story of Achilles in the underworld after he's killed at Troy or something. It, it's like a top-down uh, dungeon crawler. It looks pretty cool. I'd be interested to play it. It shall be thy deeds. But no man shall attain to honour's height, except his heart be right within. Her stem is hard to climb, and high in heaven spread her branches, and high in only they whom strength heaven spread her branches. Is he referring to honour? What's he talking about here? Good shall be thy deeds, but no man shall attain to honour's height, ah. except his heart be right within. Her st right, right, right. Honour's height, except his heart be right within. Her stem is hard. So that needs to be a little shorter. Honor's height, except his heart be right within. Her stem is hard to climb. To honor's height, except his heart be right within. Her stem is hard to climb, and high in. Maybe I just like it the way it was. Honor's height, except his heart be right within. Her stem is hard to climb, yeah. and high in heaven spread her branches. Only they whom strength and toil attend. Strain up to pluck her blissful fruit, climbing the tree of honor, glow crown. Sometimes you gotta try cutting it down before you realize it was best in the first place. But you won't know it was best in the first place until you try cutting it. Only they whom strength and toil attend, strain up to pluck her blissful fruit, climbing the tree of honor, glow crown. Thou therefore follow fame, and let thy soul be not in and let thy soul be not in sorrow and let thy soul be not in sorrow afflicted low fame and let and let thy soul be not in sorrow afflicted over much in sorrow afflicted over much and let thy soul be not in sorrow afflicted over much no yeah the second one's better therefore follow fame and let thy soul be not in sorrow afflicted over much nor in prosperity over glad to friends Dragon King saying, uh, I think it has a little bit of all of them because it has different maps, or they're adding new maps and it has uh, looks like stuff from different games. That's cool. Good.
Uh, yeah, I, I uh, have enjoyed my share of Call of Duty in the day, uh, and I still look forward to many of them when they come out. I haven't played one in a while, though. I think the last one I played, the last campaign I played was Infinite Warfare, which I really liked. I don't think I played any after that, or any that were released chronologically after that. Fame, and let thy soul be not in sorrow afflicted overmuch, nor in prosperity over glad. To friends, to comrades, child and wife, be kindly of heart, remembering still that near to all men stand the gates of doom, the mansions. Dragon King's on the way home from work. Good stuff. Best part of the day. The of heart. Remembering still that near to all men stand the gates of doom, the mansions of the dead. For humankind are like the flower of grass, the blossom of spring. These fade the while those bloom. Therefore be ever kindly with thy kind. Now to the Argives say. Yes, okay, yeah. Be with thy kind. Now to the Argives say, therefore be ever kindly with thy kind. Now to the Argives, therefore be ever kindly with thy kind. Now to the Argives say, to Atreus' son, Agamemnon. Yeah, this is basically the part where Achilles comes back to life and he's like, became like a Zen master after being like, he comes back as a ghost rather, to advise Neoptolemus. And he tells him all these great pieces of advice, and then he, like, with his parting words, he basically says, like, by the way, tell Agamemnon that he's still a dick. And then he goes away. It's like a, it's a nice little parting shot. These fade the while those bloom. Therefore be ever kindly with thy kind. Now to the Argives say, to Atreus' son, Agamemnon, chiefly, if my battle toil round... Be ever kindly with thy kind. Now to the Argives say, to Atreus' son, Agamemnon, chiefly, if my battle toil round Priam's walls and those sea raids I led, or ever I set foot, or ever I set foot, and those sea raids I led, or ever I set, and those sea raids I led, or ever I set foot, and those sea raids on Priam's walls and those sea. That doesn't work. We gotta cut it in the middle. And those sea raids. Because I think in this context, or ever I set foot means before I ever set foot. And those sea raids I led, or. That's I led. Sea raids. Raids. That's where we're cutting it. And those sea raids I led, or ever. Priam's walls and those sea raids I led, or ever I set foot on Trojan land, be in Trojan land, be in their hearts remembered. Or ever I set foot on Trojan land, be in their hearts remembered. To my okay. If my battle toil round Priam's walls and those sea raids I led, or ever I set foot on Trojan land. Be in their hearts remembered. To my on Trojan on Trojan land, be in their hearts remembered. Foot on Trojan 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 I set foot on Trojan land. I set foot on Trojan land, be in their hearts remembered. To my tomb to my tomb be Priam's daughter Pollux. To my tomb be, to my tomb be Priam's daughter Polyxena led, whom as my portion of the spoil, whom as my portion. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so he basically wants them to do one last human sacrifice and kill Priam's daughter. And be in their heart as like a, just like a sort of, token of their appreciation for everything he did while he was alive. And the ghosts would show up a lot in Homer's Odyssey. Um, I don't remember if there's really any in the Iliad, 
But they're always doing stuff. Ghosts usually show up while people are sleeping, which I believe is what's happening now. For I set foot on Trojan land, be in their hearts remembered. To my tomb be Priam's daughter Polyxena led, whom as my portion of the spoil I claim. Whom as my portion... Priam's daughter Polyxena led, whom as my portion of the spoil I claim, and sacrifice thereon, and sacrifice thereon, and sacrifice thereon, else shall my wrath thereon, and sacrifice thereon, and sacrifice thereon. I think the second one's best. And sacrifice thereon. Bill, I claim. And sacrifice thereon. Okay, good. Spoil, I claim. And sacrifice thereon. Else shall my wrath against them for more. Else shall my wrath against them more than for Briseis. The more than for Briseis burn them more. Okay. It's kind of a weird moment because he says, like, if you don't do this, I will cause the sea to just roil up and you'll never be able to escape on the ocean. And they do it, and then he stops the sea, but then they get in a, a big, uh, you know, nautical storm anyway. So it doesn't, it wasn't because of Achilles, but, you know, it's, it doesn't prevent the action from happening. And sacrifice thereon, else shall my wrath against them, more than for Briseis, more than for Bry, more than for Bry, wrath against them, more than for Briseis burn. The waves of the great deep will I turmoil to bar their way, upstirring storm on them, that through their own mad folly, pining away here, there, that through their own mad folly, pining away here, they may linger long. So I wanted to get a little bit of the rage of Achilles in there one last time. We had some really good opportunities to do angry Achilles while he was still in the story at the beginning. But I figure he's not completely cured of his uh, uh, anger issues. Through their own mad folly, pining away here, they may linger long, until to me they pour drink offerings, yearning sore for home. But when they have slain the maiden, I grudge not that whoso will may bury her far from me. I grudge not that whoso will may bury her far from me. I grudge not that whoso will may bury her far from me. I, I grudge not that whoso will may bury her far from me. That whoso. I think that one's probably best. Then, as a wind have slain the maiden, I grudge not that whoso will may bury her far from me. Bury her far from me. Not a, like, that part is, I like parts about it, but it, his speech is so long that I, uh, I'm not a big fan of that section. That whoso will may bury her far from me. Then, as a wind breath swift, he fleeted thence, and came to the Elysian plain, fleeted thence, and came to the Elysian plain. Wind breath swift, he fleeted. Then, as a wind breath swift, he fleeted thence, and came to the Elysian plain, whereto a path to heaven reacheth, for the feet ascending and descending of the blessed. Then the sun star path to heaven reacheth, for the feet ascending and descending of the blessed. Then the sun started up from sleep, and called his sire to mind, and glowed. Yeah, so Neoptolemus was sleeping during this whole thing. Ending of the blessed. Then the sun started up from sleep, and called his sire to mind, and glowed, to mind, and glowed the heart within him. Called his sire to mind, and glowed the heart within him. When to wide heaven, 
there to mind and glow the heart within him. Call his sire to mind and glow the heart within him. When to wide heaven the heart within him. And glowed the heart within him. When to wide heaven the child, when to wide heaven the child of mist uprose, scattering night, to mind, and glowed the heart within him. When to wide heaven the child of mist uprose, scattering night, unveiling earth and air, then from their rest, then from their rest, with laughter, scattering night, unveiling earth and air, then from their rest. Up Veiling earth and air, then from their rest scattering night, unveiling earth and air, then from their rest upspread. Why do I have a problem with the timing here? When to wide heaven the child of mist uprose, scattering night, unveiling earth and air, then from their rest up. No, see, now that's too long. Scattering night, unveiling earth and air, then from their rest upsprang Achaea's sons, yearning for home. With laughter, again they hailed down to the. Sh this is a really hard sentence to say. With laughter, with laughter, gan they hail down to the sea the keels. With laughter, gan they hail down to the sh laughter, gan they hail. But lo, their hate. With laughter, gan they hail down to the sea. Then from their rest up sprang Achaea's sons, and Achaea's sons yearning for home. With laughter, gan they hail down. Why is there two breaths there? sons yearning for home. With laughter gan they hail down to the sea the keels. But lo, their haste was wa- But lo, their haste was reined in. After gan they hail down to the sea the keels. But lo, their haste- They hail down to the sea the keels. But lo, their- After gan they hail down to the sea the keels. But lo, their haste was reined in by Achilles' mighty son. But lo, their haste was reined in by Achilles' mighty son. Reined in by Achilles. But lo, their haste was reined in by Achilles' mighty son. Okay, that's a section break. By Achilles' mighty son. He assembled them. He assembled them and told his sire. This is a pretty, um... upsetting scene as well. I mean, after all the uh, stuff that happened in the previous Sorry. chapter, it's not really as much to speak about, but it's pretty uh, heart-wrenching because they essentially like drag Polyxena kicking and screaming and then like, I, I believe somebody begs for her life and they just like, don't listen. They, they like cut, cut her throat or whatever right in front of them pretty brutal it but then you know the whole previous chapter was stuff like that so it's kind of like par for the course at this point the keels but lo their haste was reined in by achilles mighty son he assembled them and told his sire's behest hearken dear sons of argon oh so neoptolemus has lines here pulled them and told his sire's behest hearken dear sons of argives battle staunch to this, my glorious father, hearken, dear sons of Argives, battle staunch. To this, my glorious father's hest. The sire's behest. He biddeth, he say, hearken, the sire's behest. Hearken, dear sons of Argives, battle staunch. To this, my glorious father's hest. To me spoken in darkness, slumber. Battle staunch. To this, my glorious father's hest, to me spoken in darkness, slum. My glorious father's hest, to me spoken in darkness, slumbering. Glorious father's hest, to me spoken in darkness, slumbering on my bed. He saith he dwells with the immortal gods. He saith. He saith he dwells with the immortal gods. He biddeth you slumbering on my bed. 
He saith he dwells with the immortal gods. He biddeth you and Atreus' son, the king, to bring as his war good and passing fair to his dim dark tomb, Polyxena, queenly... Polyxena, Polyx... Okay. Passing fair to his dim dark tomb, Polyxena, queenly robed, to slay her there, but far thence to bury... Queenly robed, to slay her there, but far thence to bury... But far thence bury her, but if ye slight him. Polyxena, queenly robed, to slay her there, but far thence bury her. No, I think we matched the timing, it works. Polyxena, queenly robed, to slay her there, but far thence bury her. But if ye slight him, and essay to sail the sea, he threateneth to stir the waves to bar your path upon the deep. To stir up, he threateneth waves to he threateneth to stir up the waves to bar to stir stir see he threateneth to stir up the waves to bar your path upon the deep and here storm bounding long time to hold you and here storm bound long time to hold you damn the other ones uh storm bound long bounding ding it's not going to cut together, but let's try it. Long. Oh, wait. It's the other way around. This goes here. It's not going to work. Upon the deep. And here, storm bound, long time to hold you. Ah, kind of works. Hold on. Bound, long time. No, it's not going to work. Bound, long. Bounding. Long, 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 long. Yeah, it's not a clean cut. We're gonna use the second take. Are your path upon the deep, and here storm bound, long time to hold you, ships and men, ships and men. I guess Achilles would be able to do that because Thetis, his mother Thetis, is a, one of the, you know, sea, sea nymphs or whatever, myriads. And here, storm bound, long time to hold you, ships and men. Okay. Another section break. Hearken they, and as to a god. and men. Then hearken they, and as to a god they pray. For even now a storm blast on the sea upheave the waves, broad backed. Now a storm blast on the sea upheave the waves, broad backed and thronging fast, more than before. And thronging fast, more than before. Broad backed and thronging fast, more than before, beneath the mat the great deep broad backed and thronging fast more than before beneath the matting wind toss the great deep smit by poseidon's hands for blast on the sea upheave the waves broad backed and thronging fast more than before beneath the matting wind toss the great deep smit by toss the great that's it smit by po you need a, a sharper Four delivery. beneath the matting wind. Toss the great deep. Smith by... What is this part? Yeah, even that previous line needs to be more aggressive. The waves. Broad backed and thronging. For even now a storm blast on the sea. Then hearken they. As to a god they prayed. For even now a storm blast on the sea upheaved the waves. Broad backed and thronging fast, more than before against the matting wind. Tossed the great deep, smit by Poseidon's hands for a, f for a grace to Achilles. Yeah, something like that. This part's too soft. They prayed. For even now, then hearken they. I'm gonna mark this for re record.
Needs to be more furious, comma, ro matching the roiling ocean. And hearken they, and as to a god they prayed. For even now a storm blast on the sea upheaved the waves, broad backed and thronging fast, more than before beneath the matting wind. Toss the great deep, smith by Poseidon's hands for a grace to strong Achilles. All the winds grace to Toss the great deep, smith by Poseidon's hands for a grace to strong Achilles. All the winds swooped on the waters, prayed the Dardans all to Achilles, and as a man to his to Achilles, and a man prayed and swooped on the waters, prayed the Dardan the matting wind. Toss the great deep, smith by Poseidon's hands. Toss the great deep, smith by Poseidon. Gotta cut the difference here. Toss the great deep, smith by Poseidon's hands for a grace to strong Achilles. All the winds swooped on the waters. Pray the Dardans all to Achilles. And a man. Why did they say that twice in a row? Do they really say that? Yeah. Uh huh. So hold on. Toss the great deep, smith by Poseidon's hands for a grace to strong Achilles. All the winds swooped on the waters. Pray the Dardans all to Achilles, and a man. Yeah, it needs to be like. For a grace to strong Achilles, all the winds swooped on the waters. Pray the Dardans all to Achilles, and a man to his fellow cried. Yeah, something like that. It, you can't use the same. I I don't know why I delivered it that way. Pray the Dardans all. I mark this for re-record. Do another intonation of Achilles because you just said it a second ago. I write to myself. On the waters, pray the Dardans all to Achilles, and a man to his fellow cried, Great Zeus's seed, great Zeus. Okay. Dragon King saying, are the characters like Scottish, or what's the background of it? Uh, so this is the... Uh, sequel to the Iliad, so uh, Greek Greek mythology. The characters here are Greeks and Trojans, and also Greek gods sometimes. Uh, as for the character voices that I'm doing, uh, I get do various accents, but I don't think it sounds right when you do a Greek um, story with an American accent for the characters. I just don't think it sounds right, so I, I give them all different kinds of accents. The Dardans all to Achilles, and a man to his fellow cried, Great Zeus's seed Achilles verily was. This is too loud. Great Zeus's seed Achilles verily was. Therefore he, therefore is he a god, who in days Achilles verily was. Therefore is he a god. What's, what's raised up like this? Oh, it didn't take... Great Zeus's seed Achilles verily was. Achilles verily was. Therefore is he a god. Achilles verily was. Therefore is he a god, who in days past dwelt among us. For lapse of dateless time makes not the sons of heaven to fade away. Then to Achilles too. Okay. Welcome uh, Chris Jeffrian into the show. We are working on our audiobook. Welcome in. Days past dwelt among us. For lapse of dateless time makes not the sons of heaven to fade away. Good. Chris Jeffrian saying, wow, this is very impressive. Thanks. I've been working on it for a while. The uh, project is finally nearing the conclusion. We just finished the cover art a couple days ago, um, and all the illustrations. Not only are we making an audiobook, uh, but I am also publishing my own illustrated edition of this book. Uh, and so I wrote everything uh, that I needed to write. Uh, I have the Kindle book mocked up. I have the Amazon store page stuff like ready to go. The illustrations are all done, which took forever. 
and uh, we're on chapter 14 out of 14 right now of the audiobook. But that's not necessarily an indication because we still have uh, a couple things to do in the middle section. But yeah, it's coming very near the end. I'm very uh, happy with it. Sons of heaven to fade away. Then to Achilles' tomb the host returned. not the sons of heaven to fade away. Then to Achilles' tomb the host returned, and led the maid, as calf by herdman dragged. Then to Achilles' tomb the host returned, and led the maid, as calf by herdman heaven to fade away. Then to, then to Achilles' tomb the host returned, and led the maid, as calf by herdman dragged for sacrifice. That's better. Sons of heaven to fade away. Then to Achilles' tomb the host returned, and led the maid, as calf by herdman dragged for sacrifice, from woodland pastures torn from its mother's side, and lowing long and loud it moans with anguished heart. So Priam's child wailed in the side, and that needs less time. Pastures torn from its mother's side, and lowing long and loud it moans with anguished heart. So moans with anguished heart. So Priam's child wailed in the hands of foes. Priam's child wailed in the hands of foes. So Priam's child wailed in the hands of foes. Down streamed her. I don't like the delivery on that. As when beneath the heavy sack. So Priam, long and loud, it moans with anguished heart. So Priam's child wailed in the hands of foes. Down streamed her tears, as when beneath the as when down streamed her tears, down streamed her tears. That's better. Child wailed in the hands of foes. Down streamed her tears. Streamed her tears, as when beneath the heavy sack. Down streamed her tears, as when beneath the heavy sacks of sand, olives clear skinned, never blotched by drops of storm. Pour out their oil, when the long levers creak as strong men strain the cords. So, when the long levers creak as strong men strain the cords, so poured the tears of so poor strong men strain the cords, so poured the strong men strain the cords, so poured the tears strain the cords, so poor. Slightly less time we need. As strong men strain the cords, so poor. Nope. Creek. As strong men strain the cords, so poured the tears of travail burden Priam's daughter. So poured the tears of travail burden Priam's daughter. Hail to stern. As strong men strain the cords, so poured the tears of travail cords. So poured the tears of travail burden Priam's daughter. Hail. So poured the tears of travail burden Priam's daughter. Hail to stern Achilles' tomb. Tears blent with moans. Hail to stern Achilles' tomb. Tears blent with moans. Yeah, last take is best on this one. Probably should have checked how many takes I had. Okay, let's raise all this. I think this is where Hecuba, probably Hecuba, begs for her life. Now's the time to do it, I suppose. And strain the cords. So poured the tears of travail burden Priam's daughter, hailed to stern Achilles' tomb. Tears blent with moans. To a stern Achilles. Tears blent, drenched were her bosom. Okay, and this. Blent with moans. Drenched were her bosom folds. Glistened the drops. Glistened the. Glistened, drenched were her bosom folds. Glistened the drops. Tears blent with moans. Drenched were her bosom folds. Glistened the drops on flesh clear white as costly ivory. Hail to stern, Ach hail to stern Achilles' tomb. Tears blent with moans. 
drenched were her bosom folds. Glistened the drops of... Glistened the drop... Then to crown... Drenched were her bosom folds. Glistened the drops on... Drenched were her bosom folds. Glistened the drops on... Gl what is this? Just like a rogue sound. Bosom folds. Glistened the drops on flesh clear white as costly ivory. Her bosom folds. Glistened the drops on flesh clear white as costly ivory. Then to crown all her griefs on flesh clear white as costly ivory. Then, to crown all her griefs, yet sharper pain fell on the heart of hapless Hecuba. Then did her soul recall that awful dream. Oh, this is Ivory. a section break. Okay. Clear white as costly ivory. Then, to crown all her griefs, yet sharper pain fell on the heart of hapless Hecuba. Hecuba is uh, the queen of Priam, also the queen of Troy obviously, um, since Pri Priam is the king of Troy. And she loses every single son and daughter that she had, which is many. They had, like, Priam had 50 sons, but not all by Hecuba. But you can imagine that a large, she cared about them. And uh, that's, that's really tough. So she's, like, one of the most tragic characters in the story. You're white as costly ivory. Then, to crown all her griefs, yet sharper pain fell on the heart of hapless Hecuba. Then did her soul recall that awful... ...fell on the... ...yet sharper pain fell on the heart of hapless Hecuba. Then did her soul recall that awful dream, the vision of sleep that night... ...the vision of sleep of that night overpassed. Recall that awful dream... The vision of sleep of that night overpassed. For seemed that on Achilles' tomb she stood, moaning, her hair downstreaming to the ground, and from her breasts, and from her breasts blood dripped to the earth the while, and from her breasts blood dripped to the earth the while, and drenched. The first one's better, I think. Her breasts blood dripping to the ground. The ground, and from her breasts blood dripped to the earth the while and drenched the tomb. Fear haunted touching this, foreboding all calamity, she wailed piteously. Far rang her wild lament. As a dog moaning at her master's door utters long as a dog Far rang her wild lament. As a dog moaning at her master's door utters long howls, her teats with milk distent at her master's door utters long howls, her teats with milk distent, whose whelps, ere their eyes open to the light, her lords, their eyes open to the light, her lords afar have flung, oh. eyes open to the light, her lords afar have flung, a prey to kites. Her lords af to the light, her lords afar have flung, a prey to kites. And now with short, sharp, so the the story is comparing Hecuba to um, the moans that come from a mother dog when it's uh, puppies before their eyes are even opened. So like that's very, very young. Before their eyes are even opened are thrown to carrion and, and, and executed. That's a pretty strong visual. And now with short, sharp cries she plays. And now Nobody wants to hear about puppies being murdered. That's how you know the story is getting serious. Sharp cries she plains, and now long howling. The weird outcry thrills the air. And now long howling. The weird outcry thrills the air. The weird outcry thrills the air. So wailed and shrieked for her child, Hecuba. <sighs> okay. Howling. And now, lo the weird out now long howling, the weird outcry, now long howling, the weird outcry thrills the air. So wailed and sh 
cry thrills the air. So wailed and shrieked for her child, Hecuba. Child, Hecuba. Oh, me. Oh, me. Oh, me. Oh, he really did a lot of these takes, huh? Child, Hecuba. What sorrows, first or last, shall I lament, heart anguished, who am full of woes? What sorrows, first or last? Oh, Second me. Second one's better. Oh, me. So wailed and shrieked for her child, Hecuba. Ah, me! What sorrows, first or last, shall I lament, heart anguished, who am full of woes? Those unimagined ills of my sons, my king, have suffered. Those unimagined ills, my sons, my king, have suffered. Or my city, those full of woes. Those unimagined ills, my sons, my king, have suffered. Or my city, my daughters shamed, or my despair, my day of slavery. What sorrows, first or last, shall I lament, heart anguished, who am full of woes? Those, what sorrows, first or last. Oh yeah, new takes better. Zoink. Ah oh, me, what sorrows, first or last. Ah oh, me, what sorrows, first or last, shall I lament, heart anguished, who am full of woes. Those unimagined ills my sons, my kings have suffered, or my city, or my daughters shamed, or my despair, my day of slavery. Oh, the grim fates have caught me in a net of manifold ills. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. She's weighing the options between different things to be worried about. Hecuba probably, out of anybody in the story, has the most things to be sad about. I wanted to reflect that. Oh, my despair, my day of slavery. Oh, the grim fates have caught me in a net of manifold ills. Despair, my... Despair, my day of slavery. Oh, the grim fates have caught me in slavery. Oh, the grim fates have caught me in a net of manifold ills. Oh, child. They have spun for thee dread weird of unimagined misery. They have thrust thee away, when near was Hymen's hymn, from thine, when near was Hymen's hymn, from thine espousals, marked. They have thrust thee away, when near was Hymen's hymn, from thine espousals, marked thee for destruction. Okay. They have thrust thee away, when near was Hymen's hymn from thine espousals, marked thee for destruction, dark, unendurable, unspeakable. For lo, for lo, a dead man's heart, a speakable. For lo, a dead man's heart, Achilles' heart, is by our blood made warm with life today. O child, dear child, that I might die with thee, that earth might swallow me, that earth might swallow me, ere I see thy doom, ere I see thy doom, ere I see thy doom. Oh, that's a nice one. Kind of like that. Withering. Earth might swallow me, ere I see thy doom. Good. So who cried she? So cried she, weeping never ceasing. Ere I see thy doom. So cried she, weeping never ceasing tears, weeping never ceasing tears, for grief on bitter grief encompassed her. But when the so cried. Okay. Give it a save. So we started at seven minutes. We ended up at 17 minutes of finished audio. That perfectly matches the thing I say where on average we get 10 minutes of finished audio done per hour. Good stuff, ladies and gents. Oh, man. Okay. Thank you for joining. Got to stretch a little bit.
The book, if you want to find it for yourself, is called Post-Homerica, The Fall of Troy. It's coming soon in my new illustrated edition in text form with illustrations on Amazon. It's coming, the thing we're working on here, the audiobook version coming to Audible and Amazon very soon. Keep your eyes open for it. There will be stuff in the Discord and on the front page of the channel about it when it's out. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.